All right, so before we jump into this video, a couple of corrections from the last one. This map displayed Turkish as using nitrogen, but it actually uses azot. Dusik, the Czech word, as well as the cognate tacheng in Kashubian, actually have many more interpretations than just sol, including to choke, with Slovak considering it as sol, analogous to azot, and Czech considering it as to smother, analogous to stikstof. Kazakh oteg means maker of fire, same as suteg for hydrogen being maker of water, and kandur is a pre-existing word and an automatopoeia. Anyway, back to your regularly scheduled video. Potassium is our third doubly named element with both kalium and potassium. These languages use kalium and these use potassium. Now, potash refers to a specific kind of ash that's soluble in water, and the word for that in other languages is used in Czechoslovak as well as Hebrew. Maori, which is beginning to annoy me, refers to it as the dusty metal. Calcium is used in these languages and comes from the Latin calx, meaning lime or limestone. Now, this is a pretty common material, so it's no surprise that calx was calced for calcium into Quechua, Czechoslovak, Polish, and Nahuatl. Do I even have to say it at this point? It's the grayish metal. Finally, as we enter the transition metals, we get a reprieve from everyone's different names for things. For about three elements, that is, because we get back into it with chromium. Both Maori and Nahuatl call it a colorful or bright metal. Everyone has a word for iron, dipstick. It came for free with your freaking iron age. Okay, Nahuatl uses black metal for it, and Bengali does have a word for the metal iron, but it uses an English loan word to refer to the element iron. And some of those etymologies are more complicated than just iron. Serbian is named after nails, Hungarian repurposed the word for copper, Maori is from English, Japanese, Korean, Vietnamese, and Thai all loaned from Chinese, and Cebuano loaned from a Hokkien word meaning axe. Nickel is a shortening of demon copper because it looks shiny, but it's not valuable. Other languages are kinder because nickel is the dazzling metal in Maori. Nickel is the white metal in Nahuatl. In Osetian, however, it's referred to as the creator of metal, or armor. Although I don't know who would want to make armor out of nickel. These languages use the word copper, which is ultimately from Cyprus, a country in Asia. These languages have their own word to mean copper. In Maori, Nahuatl, and Thai, copper is the red metal. The southern Slavs all loaned the Turkish word, and Mongolian loaned a Turkic word. But don't get too cocky, Turks, because Azerbaijani, Uzbek, Kazakh, and Uyghur all loaned from Persian, as did Georgian. Maltese loans from Italian, and Indonesian and Malay loaned from Sanskrit. Kurdish uses this word sifir. Now, this looks incredibly Semitic, but the Semitic root SFR means relating to travel, or to count, or number. So it's most likely a native word referring to the metal copper. The German word zinc comes from point or prong, and, and English, as well as all of these languages, took it, including Turkish. Holy crap, is that a reference to peaks out? My peak was a peak peak. Anyway, Hindi and Gujarati have their own words for it that they inherited from Sanskrit. Georgian, Malayalam, and Tamil also got their words from Sanskrit, but with less fanfare. The Greek name, false silver, is essentially the same logic as the German for nickel. It's the boring, less valuable version of a shiny metal. Mongolian is from tsairach, which means to fade or whiten. Persian uses a word that means brass, and Uzbek uses a Persian word that means brass. The Vietnamese word for zinc existed before the French colonized them and introduced zinc, but obviously it didn't mean zinc back then, they just assigned zinc to mean that when zinc arrived. Japanese calls it lead too, the leadening. Korean loans from Japanese, Thai uses French but like a really messed up version, Maori calls this the white metal, and Kazakh, uh, heck if I know. Arsenic is one of the more interesting ones. It's an Arabic word, and these languages loaned it via Greek. This language is Greek, and this language is Arabic. In Japanese, it was either always in the language, or it was just made up on the spot, and Korean loans from Japanese. Belarusian, Ukrainian, and Russian all use the equivalent of mouse poison. Ossetian, Chuvash, Kazakh, Kyrgyz, and Mongolian all loan that. Thai just uses rat substance, and Georgian just uses equal to poison. Uzbek and Mahdi use mouse poison, but the Persian word rather than the Russian. Komi uses white stone, and I'm not sure for moksha, although shadow maker, Suleyama, would work for it. So that's my best guess. Bromine. Stench. But everyone just calls it bromine. Everyone? Or everyone except Chinese? Stinking liquid? No. Stinking element? Nauseating element? From here, we have a long stretch broken by niobium, which everyone and their dad calls niobium, but Nahuatl calls it the ashy gray metal. And then all the way to silver. As usual, most languages have a name for the shiny precious metal, including Quechua, who also adds the word metal to be redundant, but Adamonian, sorry, 
Aromanian uses a loan from Greek. Maltese loans from Arabic. Japanese, Korean, and Thai loan from Chinese. Cebuano loans from Spanish. Malay loans from Khmer. And Indonesian loans from Malay. Swahili loans from French. Sesotho loans from English. Gujarati and Hindi use a word for moonlight, and Bangla uses a word for beautiful. Vietnamese, Tamil, and Malayalam use a word for silver, the color. And the Iberian languages use a word for wide, because it's like hammered into sheets. And Nahuatl has one word for both gold and silver. Teoquitlatl, and silver is the white version of that. Almost nobody has their own word for tin. Most of them loan from another language, and most of the time, that language no longer uses that word. <sighs> Let's just speed through it. The Romance languages sans Aromanian and Basque use a word they loan from the Celtic languages. The Western Slavic and Finnic languages use a word they loan from the Germanic languages. The Southern Slavic languages, except Croatian and Slovenian, use a place name in what is now Thailand that was loaned into Malay, Arabic, and Turkish, and then into their own languages. Croatian, Slovenian, and Arabic use a word loaned from Greek. Armenian uses this word loaned from Sumerian. Most Turkic and Iranian languages use the same Thai place name without going through Turkish. The North Indian languages, Sesotho and Maori, use a word loaned from English. Maltese loaned from Sicilian, Vietnamese and Korean are loaned from Chinese, Thai is loaned from Pali, and Swahili and Lingala are loaned from French. As you may have noticed, the word for tin is typically related to lead in Thai and the Slavic languages. The word could originally mean either and evolved to mean only tin. The same will be true about lead when we get there. Another way of differentiating the two is to put white in front of tin, as Mongolian, Mokcha, and Malayalam do, and black in front of lead, which we'll get to. Now, what word originally meant any shiny white metal, but its meaning was narrowed to just tin. Quechua is interesting. Its word is Chayanta, which used to refer to a region of Bolivia, Chayantaca, where, in the 1700s, a major tin mine was discovered. Antimony is a loan from Arabic, and these are all the languages that use that. Interestingly, the Latin stivium is pretty rare, only used by six languages, but Turkish came up with their own word, which went through Persian, back to the Turkic languages, into the Eastern Slavs, and all the way to the Uralic languages in Russia. Armenian took a word from Aramaic and was happy, and Thai. Cesium is almost always cesium. Cesium. Except Sranan Congo, which is a Dutch Creole spoken in Suriname, and its word for cesium literally translates to firestone sauce. Make of that what you will, given cesium's biggest uses are as mining fluid to make optical glass and to boost catalysts. Barium means heavy metal with one exception. And here, Maori colexification comes to bite me in the butt. This word, okehu, does not translate into anything on its own. My best guess is this etymology for strips away struggle. Cerium is named after Ceres, a Roman god whose Greek counterpart is Demeter. Naturally, the Greek name is named after Demeter. Oh, you thought that was stupid? You ain't seen nothing yet. Prometheum is confusing. The word it has written for Uyghur is Zhi. That would, perhaps coincidentally, make it similar to the Mandarin Zhu, the incorrect character that the website has written, but I've seen it as stated in other places that Uyghur is Prometheo, which would make it the same as the other Turkic names, which is usually how it works. But Wikipedia says Zhu. I usually trust Wikipedia, but this is the Wikipedia page. That's not general information off to the side, that's just the template box that hasn't even been filled up yet. So I'm going to make the judgment call that Prometheum in Uyghur is Prometheo. Uyghur strikes back in Samarium with Chalra, which apparently means scythe. Again, I'm very skeptical of these Uyghur translations. Everyone went with Tantalum. At this point in the periodic table, most of the elements are named after places or people, and people can't be bothered to come up with their own name for them. But you know who can? Nahuatl. Nel Neshtik doesn't mean anything. But, if you'll recall, Neshtik Tepozti was Niobium, and Nel means true, the equivalent of the English prefix you. So it could be either true Niobium or true grey metal. Oh, I know you've just been on the edge of your seats for this one. It's number four that only has two options. Tungsten is a Swedish word meaning heavy stone because it's a stone that's heavy. It's not used in Sweden, where they instead use Wolfram, which we actually have had some trouble figuring out where it's from. These languages use Wolfram, these use Tungsten. Friulian uses both. Platinum is ultimately derived from a Spanish diminutive of silver, Plata. Moksha and Quechua did the same thing, but in their own language which makes sense because platinum is from where the Quechuans live. Greek, Mongolian, Uyghur, and Japanese use white gold, which is also fairly accurate. Chinese uses a variant of thin plate of metal, which I guess makes it the same as the Spanish silver.
And finally, the big G, gold, Mr. Bling Bling himself. There's not a single language that doesn't have a word for gold. Most of them have had them since their proto-language, but where exactly did the other words come from? The Celtic language is an Albanian loan from Latin. Aromanian, loaned from Greek, producing a word that's a cognate with English and Latin amalgam. Persian is also from Arabic, a different root. Arabic, for its part, just made it up. That's right, the word for gold in all Semitic languages just sort of appeared one day, and we have no reason to believe that it was inspired by anything. Swahili loaned that, although it also uses one loan from Latin. Japanese and Korean loaned from Chinese, and in keeping with silver, Vietnamese is based on the color gold. Malayalam loaned from the Sanskrit, which used to mean good color. Thai uses a combination of the color gold and copper, both of which are ultimately loaned from Chinese. Malay and Indonesian are either from Sanskrit or Khmer. Lingala is loaned from French. Maori and Sesotho are loaned from English. And Nahuatl has one word for both gold and silver, which gold is the yellow version of. Mercury is inexorably tied to silver, except in these languages, which are ultimately derived from a Roman god of travel? <laughs> what? But almost every other language calls it adjective silver. Here's the list. These languages call it quick silver. These languages call it living silver. These call it water silver, including Mongolian, which- Wow! <coughs> These call it a word which meant water silver in Latin, these for Persian, and these for Chinese, and this calls it wriggling silver, and this one calls it feminine silver. That's real. Now what, in contrast, calls it living tin. These actually have a word for it. Hungarian is thin and dilute, Persian is alive. Malay, Indonesian, and Malayalam are liquid, but from Sanskrit. Thai and Tamil are mercury, but from Sanskrit. And these languages are alive, but from Persian. Komi was surprisingly difficult, which makes sense because... You see where this joke is going. It means to turn about or coil up, and Marie Maidar, I was lost on, but Elisha Vid is apparently preferred, and it means living water, without any reference to metal. It's petering out as we reach lead. As you'll recall, it was connected with tin, and these languages had a word which meant either, but came to mean lead. You may notice that this word was tin in the east and lead in the west. Anyway, as previously stated, here are the ones where it is black tin. And as you might remember, some words for tin went on a wild journey. Well, that word stayed in Thai, but shifted to lead. But wait, there's more! Indonesian uses a cognate to its word for tin, but loaned from Javanese. And Marie calls it liquid tin, making it the same as the Nahuatl mercury. A lot of words actually reference this fact that lead is really malleable and soft. These languages' words are derived from to flow, soft, and to compact. Chinese is quite the opposite, although the word just meant lead, people thought it was meant to be hard metal, so it changed accordingly. Some other name origins include dark and obsidian. These languages have a word that's dedicated to lead and always has been. Now, let's get into the loan words. Malay, Swahili, Albanian, and some of the Celtic languages from Latin, Armenian from Sumerian, the Romance languages from somewhere in the Mediterranean, Tamil from Sanskrit, the Finnic languages from Germanic, Bengali, and Sesotho from English, Persian, Tajik, and Kurdish from the same place where we got the English silver, and Korean from the Chinese word meaning soldier. Nahuatl is presumably moon rock, although this part might mean more than just moon because it also separates earthworms from the generic worm. My guess is night related to the goddess Metzli. Radium. Are we sure it's a metal? Better tack on the metal just to be sure, said the creators of Quechua. Maori comes up with an interesting metaphor for radiation, though, calling it a lavish and wasteful metal. That's the end, right? Wrong! It's Sranantongo with a steel chair! Kawasino is the Sranantongo word for thorium. I have no idea whatsoever. Usually, I might, I might go to the trouble of writing unknown in the notes, but I'm beyond stumped on this one. We're at the last three medals before IUPAC stepped in and said that past this point, all of them needed to be standardized. Starting with uranium. Uranium is named after the planet Uranus, but it's also named after the god of the sky of the same name. Greek replaces it with a similarly named Uranus and Nahuatl, despite the protestations of Tezcatlipoca, translated it directly as Sky God Metal. Maori takes a more pragmatic approach, naming it Nuclear Metal, basing its term for nucleus off of the core of a nut. But Maori faltered before the finish line. Its word for Neptunium is just Neptunium, and as Nahuatl saw its friend crumble, this woke Nahuatl up to the reality. So as Greek wheeled out Poseidon for their name, the Nahuatl whipped out Tlaloc the Aztec god of rain and water, the scared away Greek. And at the end of the world, Nahuatl replaces the god of death Pluto with the Aztec death god Mictlan Tecuhtli. And thus comes the death of this video as it comes to an end. But first, here's what the new names of the periodic table would look like if we calc from other languages as much as possible. Water stuff. Solium. Lithium. 
White Earth Metal, Dark Salt, Coal Stuff, Dilute Gas, Rust Bearer, Yellow Gas, Red Gas, Tide Metal, Foreign Metal, Easy White, Firestone, Poopium Star, Fired Trumpet Earth, Saltium, Dusty Metal, Limium, Titanium, Vanadium, Bright Metal, Manganese, Nailium, Armorigen, Cobalt, Demon, Lead 2, Gallium, Germanium, Shadow Maker, Selenium, Stink Juice, Krypton, through to Ash Metal, Moonlight, still Cadmium and Indium, Cornwall, Lead, Firestone Saucer, Gephionium, Struggle Strip Metal, True Ash Metal, Kremble, White Kremble, Moonlight Tess, Obsidian, Lavish Metal, Metal, Sky God Metal, Neurthium, and Helium. Oh hey! Thanks for watching. My spreadsheet's linked below, but it's not very well organized. Make sure to subscribe because the heathen Aztec god said the world will end if I don't have 1 million subscribers by the 4th of Olin. It could just be a prank email, but I wouldn't take that chance if I were you.